Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the top five financial functions in Excel. So if you're new to Excel or you really need to know financial skills, then this is the video for you. Hello, my name's Jeff from Finally Learn, where I help you finally learn financial skills like Excel. So let's get started with just a little bit of background. The financial function in Excel could also be called time value of money. So you could search for videos. In fact, I've got another video, I'll link to it below, on time value of money basics. So the idea of time value of money is a dollar today is worth more than a dollar in the future because of inflation. A dollar loses its value because of inflation and because of interest. A dollar can be invested today to earn interest in the future. Now, you can work forwards and backwards, and so it gets a little tricky. So this is a introductory video on the five functions. So here are the functions. The first one is FV for future value. That is a single amount or a lump sum at the beginning of a problem. The next one is present value or PV. It's a lump sum at the beginning of the problem. Sometimes you might hear somebody explain it. That is the amount today. Well, the payment, PMT, is a stream of equal payments and it could be positive or negative. Depends on if, if it grows the account or it takes away from the account. This is also called an annuity. So we say the payment, we know there's more than one, so it's a stream of equal payments. Number four is rate, which is the periodic interest rate. That is the interest rate that we're going to use in this problem. And then NPER is the number of periods. Now, this is number of periods not number of years. It's easy to get confused when you're first beginning this type of problem. So it could be years if the problem is annual. It could be half years if the problem is semi-annual. It could be quarters if the problem is every three months. And it could be a monthly problem. So we're talking about the periods would be months. So we're going to show how this works on an example for each one. Now, just an idea at the very beginning. Present value and future value are opposites. That means one is always going to be positive and one is always going to be negative. So normally, we say the present value will be negative because it's a cash outflow. You're paying cash now, maybe to receive cash in the future. So a lot of times the future value will be positive because it's a cash inflow. So it gets tricky. The way to do it, you have to see how it works and then manage it. Um, and so sometimes if you make a payment, you, you don't say, well, I paid a negative $100. You just said I paid $100, and you know that comes out of your pocket. So let's start with future value. I've got a couple of problems. I'll build them uh, from scratch. But I've kind of set up periods per year, which is going to be the compounding frequency, the number of periods, the rate, the present value, the payment, the future value. So let's start with this first one. I'm going to get rid of everything. So the account has $2,000 and it grows for 10 years at 7.25% interest. What is the future value or the FV? So the periods per year is going to be 1. The number of periods, now this happens to be years, so this is 10 years. The rate is going to be 7.25%. The present value is going to be 2000 Now, we're going to manage this by saying this is going to be negative 2000 because we're paying 2000 and we're going to receive a positive future value. Now, is there any payment going on? Do we add to the account every year or we subtract from the account every year? It doesn't say anything, so we can assume that's going to be zero. So we need to calculate what does this account grow to? And we're going to use the future value function. Now, when I build formulas, especially for a video like this, then I'm going to use the, FV, uh, the uh, FX right here to calculate the FV, the future value. So I'm going to use the formula builder. So I'm going to type in FV and look for future value. So here is the formula. And I'm going to build it right here and show you how it works um, with the formula text function. So the future value is going to be the rate, which is going to be 7 and a quarter percent. One thing that I do, kind of get in the habit of, is divide by the periods per year because I always want the periodic rate. Well, seven uh, and a quarter percent is going to be 0 0.0725. Divided by one, it's still the same number, but when we have monthly, like the problem down below, we'll 
divide by 12 and get a periodic rate. The number of periods is going to be 10. The payment is going to be 0. The present value is going to be 2,000. And then here we have the type. Now, the type, if you look at the very bottom, it says the type represents at the beginning of the period, we're going to put 0. We normally assume payments happen at the end of the period, so we're just going to put 0 here. You could omit it. If you have payments at the beginning of the period, you make that 1. So I'm going to hit Done. And so the answer is $4,027.20. If the account has $2,000, you start with $2,000. It grows for 10 years. 10 is the number of periods. 7.25% interest. The future value is $4,000. So $4,027.20, right? So here you can figure out what is the future value going to be with some basic assumptions. So you see here is the formula I used. So here is this formula here. The rate, the number of periods, the payment, the present value, and the type. All right, let's do a different one. So down here below it says an account is started with monthly payments of 400 for five years. The interest is 8%. What is the future value? Well, let's see what we have here. We have periods per year is going to be 12 because it's going to be monthly payments. And we need to make five years times 12, which is 60 months. 8% is the interest for the year. And so we need to take that and divide it by 12 when we get down to working the problem. The present value, there's no present value. And we're making payments. So I'm going to put a negative 400 in because we're making payments, 400 out of our pocket. And we're going to receive the future value. All right, so let's calculate here the future value. I'm going to back to my formula builder. The rate is going to be 8%. Now, that's not every month. That is an annual percent compounded monthly. So we need to divide by the 12. That's why I always remind myself and put periods per year at the very beginning. So the number of periods is 60 because we're talking about months. The payment is negative 400. The present value is zero. And the payments happen at the end of the period. So if you do the future value, if you put in $400 every month, the future value grows to $29,390. So over five years, if you save $400, then you have $29,000 because it's grown at 8%. So this is the very first one, future value, how to solve for future value problems. Now, you could combine these types of problems. You could say, well, let's say we started with 10,000. There was 10,000 in that account. Now watch, if I put in 10,000, then it's grown to 44,000. So you get interest on top of interest if you did it that way. So. We need positive and negative numbers to add to the account or subtract from the account or whatever. All right, the next one is going to be present value. So our present value is we're trying to figure out what is the value today. So let's say you'll receive 200000 in 10 years. You can earn 7.5% interest. What is the present value today? Well, this looks like it's an annual problem, so we'll say periods per year is 1. The number of periods is going to be 10 years. The interest rate is 7.5%. And we're going to calculate the present value. So what is the payment? Well, there's no payment that's listed, so it's going to be zero is the payment. The future value is going to be $200,000. You have signed a, an agreement, or somebody has offered you, and they're going to give you $200,000 in 10 years and you can earn 7.5% on your money, what's it worth today? So what's it worth today? It's going to be less than. This is the process called discounting when you bring, bring it back to present value. So let's calculate the present value. So I'm going to start and search for PV on my formula builder. So present value, we do the rate is 7.5%. I'm going to divide by 1 just because if we change that, it'll be correct. So if we change it to monthly or whatever, we add monthly payments. The number of periods is going to be 10. The payment is going to be zero. 
the future value we know is two hundred thousand. There is no um, there's no payments going on, but it happens at the end of the period, so we'll put zero. So what's that worth today? Well, it's worth ninety-seven thousand thirty-eight dollars and seventy-nine cents. So if someone's willing to to buy this stream of this uh, one lump sum payment, they would pay ninety-seven thousand dollars. They would earn seven and a half percent. So that is worth today ninety-seven thousand. Or you could pay, you could invest ninety-seven thousand thirty-eight dollars and seventy-nine cents. Let it grow for ten years at seven and a half percent. At the end of ten years, you'll have two hundred thousand dollars. So present value is what it's worth at the beginning of the problem, or what it's worth today. A lot of times, the problem, the present value is today. All right. The next one is going to be payment. So that's number three. The payment is number three. So let's show you how this one works. Now, if this is helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. That helps encourage other people to see this video. You buy a car for $22,000 and finance it for four years. Now, are you making monthly payments or are you making annual payments? We're going to make monthly payments here. Let's assume the interest is 5.2%. What is your monthly car payment or the PMT? So the periods per year is going to be 12. The number of periods is going to be 4 times 12. 4 years times 12 is 48 months. The interest rate is 5.2%. The present value. Now, we're going to make the present value to be positive 22000 Because you've received a loan, essentially you received a loan in the amount of 22000 So you received 22000 and now you're going to have to pay monthly payments to pay that off. What is the future value going to be? Well, the future value is going to be zero. You're going to pay it off in 48 equal monthly payments. Now, I can go up here and, and work on the formula builder. Let me show you how to do it because it's PMT. So if I put equals and then PMT, start my parentheses, then it tells me the rate, the number of periods, so on. So the rate is going to be 5.2% divided by 12. So we need to make sure you divide it by 12. It's not 5.2% per month. It's 5.2% is the annual rate compounded monthly. So we're going to put a comma. The number of periods is going to be 48, comma. The present value is going to be the 22,000 here. And then the future value is going to be zero, we know that we have end of the period. So our monthly payment is $508.64. That means if you buy the car for $22,000 and you finance it for four years, 48 months, you're going to start making payments of $508.64. If you did this over 60 months, what would your car payment be? 60 your car payment's down to $417. All right, so that's how you calculate a monthly payment. You could do annual payments or quarterly payments or whatever. All right, the next one is going to be the rate. We're going to figure out the interest rate. Let's say we have an in, uh, investment that has grown 10000 up to 20400 in nine years. What is the annual rate of return? The rate is the function this is also called the compounded annual growth rate, or CAGR. So the periods per year is going to be one period per year. It looks like an annual problem. The number of periods is going to be nine. The rate is what we're going to try to find. The present value is going to be 10,000. I'll make it negative 10,000 because we paid 10,000. The payment is going to be zero. We added nothing to the account and the future value is 20400 Now, one of the notes, we need to make sure the present value and future value are positive. I'll show how this works. We'll have an error. Let me go back to my formula builder and let's do rate. So rate, number of periods is nine. The payment is gonna be zero. The present value is 10,000. And remember that number is already negative. The future value is 20400 
and the payments happen at the end of the period and we don't have to guess what the answer might be. So we get 8.24%. If you had an investment of 10,000 it grew to 20,400 in nine years then you received an 8.24%. You can compare that with rates of return on other investments. Now when you first learn this you want to put in 10,000 and 20,000 both is positive you're going to get an error and the error is a number error hashtag num if it's both present value um, and future value are both positive so the num with an exclamation point is the error that you get so to watch for that you need to make the 10,000 negative now you could show that it's positive positive and in the formula you could put that the uh, payment and the present value is negative, but it's just easier to see how this works. You're paying 10,000 to receive 20,400. All right, the last one is number five, which is the number of periods. All right, so let's look at this one. We'll say you can invest $500 per, per month and you can earn 9%, and you have a goal of having 100,000 in that account. How many months? or NPER number of periods will it take to achieve your goal? So we're making monthly payments, so this is going to be periods per year is 12. We're going to solve for number of periods, so we have the other four. The rate is 9%. The present value looks like we start with zero. It doesn't say we have anything in the account. And we put in 500, so we'll put in negative 500. That's how much we pay, and we want to have 100,000 at the end. So how many months will it take us? So the number of periods. So I'm going to build the formula here for number of periods. NPER. So the rate is 9% divided by 12. Don't forget to do that. The payment is going to be $500 and that's already negative. The present value is zero. The future value is 100,000. And so the payments happen. We assume the payments happen at the end of the month. So it's going to take 122.6 months. So here's our formula. So if we took 122 divided by 12 months, we're talking about 10.2 years. So a little bit more than 10 years. And how much did it cost you? Well, you made 500 payments, $500 payments times 122 so if you multiply that, you have made payments of about $61,315, and that account with interest has grown to $100,000. So that interest is about $38,700 or so. So about $38,000 plus dollars of interest because you decided to invest and you received 9% over that 10-year period. All right, so this is our top five functions. I hope this is helpful for you. I have a video that's the top 15 function that, that expands more on these functions. I also have a video called Time Value of Money, which kind of goes into depth in these functions. I'll also have a video on each one of future value, present value, payment rate, and number of periods, so you can do a deep dive into each of these functions. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.